Welcome back everybody to Geotourism Fest, an international conference 2021 highlighting the theme, the theme of resilience of geotourism. As I told you before that we're going to move on to the panel discussions and today we are going to have Dr. Budi Lolono, the chairman of Geological Agency, Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources of the Republic of Indonesia, as well as Dr. Guy Martini joining us here as well virtually, the president of UGGP Council, also Dr. Hans Falstrup, the senior program specialist for water and environmental sciences UNESCO Jakarta headquarter. And today's discussion or panel discussion will be led by our our moderator who have finished her master degree as a master of development studies at Melbourne University. She is currently a lecturer at Sekolah Tinggi Pariwisata Mataram. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only Lia Rosida. Hi, good morning everyone, everybody. Welcome to Geotourism Festival and International Conference 2021. And this hybrid event is officially held by Rinjani Lombok UNESCO Global Geopark and uh, in collaborations with Indonesian Geologists Associations, NTB Chapter, and also Skola Tinggi Pariwisata Mataram. Ladies and gentlemen, in this special and wonderful occasion, we are going to listen to our three distinguished keynote speakers who will be delivering their substantive presentations in thir three minutes, sorry, in 30 minutes of each presentation. And after that, we are going to have a discussion session. So for those who have a burning questions, that please do not hesitate to ask question in question and answer. So ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce our panelists today. So the first panelist is Dr. Insignor Eko Budi Lelono. I hope he's here right now. And he's the chairman of Geological Agency of Republic of Indonesia. And our second uh, panelist will be Dr. Gay Martini. And he is the president of UNESCO Global, Global Council. And then uh, our last but not least panelist is Dr. Hans Dengter Thulstrup. He's the senior program uh, specialist for water and environment UNESCO for Asia Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, so today we are going to have a presentation on geotourism. So we know that geotourism is one of emerging and innovative concepts that help us to improve and to enhance our geological, uh, geological resources that help us also to improve uh, and to achieve sustainable development in our place. So we know that in geological or geotourism, there are three uh, resources that need to be protected. A means a biotic, the landscape, and geological landscape, and also climate. And B means is natural or biotic, consists of plants, also animals, and C is culture. So in this uh, presentation, uh, so there will be a, a very interesting panel session that will be delivered by our distinguished guest uh, keynote speakers. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me introduce our first panelist. So Dr. Insignor Eko Budilelono, he is the Chairman of Geological Agency of Republic of Indonesia. Hi, Bapa Dr. Insignor Eko. Yeah, so, uh, and he earned his bachelor degree in geological department of, uh, of Gajah Mada University and then earned uh, his uh, other degrees from Holloway University of London. So in this occasion, he will be delivering his presentations under the topic Geoheritage Development Opportunities for Geotourism in Indonesia. So we couldn't wait for his substantive presentation. Please welcome Dr. Insignor Eko Budilelono for his 30 minutes presentation. Uh, please have your time, doctor. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you for uh, providing uh, opportunity for us to uh, present uh, regarding the development of uh, geotourism in Indonesia. Uh, can I have a slide, please? Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
Uh, the title of this uh, presentation is the Geo Heritage as the basis for the ge geotourism development in Indonesia. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, so let me start by uh, showing the uh, terminology and uh, term, term, term and uh, meanings uh, of uh, term terminology that related to the uh, topic uh, today. I think most of you understand uh, this term and uh, its terminology, Geo geodiversity, geoheritage, geoconversation, geoconservation, geotourism, and geopark. The geodiversity is the uh, geological component in the area, in an area where the presence of distribution and its condition can reflect the process of Earth evolution, where geoheritage is a geodiversity that has a significant uh, value so it needs to be protected and passed on to the next generation geoconservation geoconservation uh, is defined as an effort to protect and preserve geodiversity and geoheritage sites whereas geotourism is a geological based tourism by utilizing the value of geodiversity and geoheritage and the geopark is uh, determined as a single unified geographical area where sites and landscape of geological significance are managed with a holistic concept of protection, education, and sustainable development. So next slide, please. As we now uh, understand that Indonesia, geology in Indonesia is quite unique, yeah, where we form by the interaction of interaction of three major plates yeah and this uh, result in the positive aspect and a negative aspect the uh, positive side we have a uh, uh, quite a uh, lot of uh, geology, geology uh, resources yeah where uh, in the uh, negative aspect we have uh, uh, we are funeral to the hazard geological hazard now one of these uh, positive aspect is a uh, uh, site yeah we have uh, a various geo site we can be uh, can be uh, uh, determined as a geo heritage. So we have a regulation, a ministry regulation, Ministry of Energy and Renewable Resources regulation number one uh, in year 2020, which uh, guidance uh, for the uh, determinant of uh, geo heritage. Next slide, please. Yes, next slide. Now, what's the uh, the role of geology in the uh, SDGs uh, program? Yeah, at least we have uh, eight aspect yeah of geology that support uh, the uh, SDGs program, uh, including the ar agrogeology, climate change, energy, engineering geology, geohazard, and the uh, geoheritage and geotourism. This is the topic that we are discussing uh, today. Hydrogeology and contaminant geology and the mineral and rock uh, materials. Next slide, please. Now, uh, we are now uh, uh, influenced our, uh, by the uh, COVID-19, uh, yeah? And uh, we, it is predicted that uh, post-COVID uh, tourism trend will be uh, at least six uh, trend yeah it is uh, for the tourism one is the natural uh, tourism and then the closer destination domestic tourism and uh, staycation tighter protocol and the tourism with the hygiene and the touchless uh, tourism next slide please and uh, as i mentioned earlier that this uh, the geological indonesia is quite unique here yeah? So uh, this uh, result in uh, the the the, the uh, quite uh, various of the geological diversity, which can be uh, created as a uh, geological uh, geoheritage. Yeah, this can be a, a various type of minerals and rock, volcanic arc, yeah, and karst landscapes, and then also the landscape of uplifted ri river coastal areas caused by active tectonic 
the uh, evidence of late Cretaceous and early tertiary uh, subduction uh, landscape of uh, sand dunes, lakes, waterfall, beaches, valleys, canyons, yeah, and then the various fossil, uh, macro and micro fossil. Next slide. Now the important uh, the value of these uh, geological heritage sites, yeah, this is quite important uh, role in the development of research and education in earth science. Uh, the increase of local people's sense uh, of pride and awareness of the surrounding uh, environment. Then this quite important things as encourage, encourage and promote sustainable economic uh, growth. Next slide. Although the uh, geo geosite is quite important, yeah, and need to be preserved, but uh, there is a threat, yeah, for this site, yeah. Uh, this will be uh, will be caused by the land uh, conversation conversion conversion of uh, infrastructure development, is without comprehensive uh, planning and uh, the uh, illegal mining. We recognize this, yeah, because uh, we need to uh, understand and to. Uh, balance yeah, between the uh, uh, development and the preservation of the uh, uh, geological site. Now, uh, the uh, after ministry and regulation issues, I think the number of the uh, uh, proposal, geoheritage proposal, yeah, uh, raised uh, significantly. Uh, at least uh, there are 70, uh, three, uh, 37 cities that uh, propose uh, their geoheritage, yeah, and uh, some of them have been uh, uh, validated, like uh, the one in uh, Kabupaten Pandegla, uh, in uh, Banten Province, and the Yogyakarta Province, and the uh, ND Province, uh, and sorry, the uh, ND uh, Resi, uh, Regency, and uh, at, at least two uh, proposals are still uh, in progress. Which is in which are in West Sumatra and the Merangin uh, Regency. Next slide, please. Now, uh, regarding the uh, presidential uh, regulation about the geo geopark that the uh, geoheritage as the foundation of uh, geopark uh, development. Next slide, please. Now the, the the number of the uh, uh, geopark national geopark uh, raised uh, significantly. Yeah, uh, at least we have uh, 14 uh, national geoparks across the region, across the uh, country, and then uh, five of uh, five UNESCO global geopark. Yeah, uh, we 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 recognize them. The geopark uh, UNESCO global geopark in Gunung Sewu and the uh, Batur. Sorry, I can read uh, clearly here. Uh, uh, Toba Caldera, UNESCO Global Geopark, Gunung Sewu, uh, Rinjani Lombok Geopark, Global Geopark. Ya, yeah, next slide please. Now, uh, the, the, the support of the geological agency of the Republic of Indonesia uh, to the, uh, the uh, uh, geopark uh, development is uh, we uh, built some uh, several uh, geopark uh, information center yeah? uh, uh, in the, in, within the uh, uh, National Geopark, uh, National Geo or UNESCO Global Geopark, yeah? in order to promote uh, geoheritage. The, at the moment, we have uh, one, two, at least uh, five or seven, uh, five or six uh, geological information center uh, within this uh, geopark. Next slide, please. Now, we also built the uh, database, yeah, in order to uh, share 
our information regarding the uh, geo heritage across the uh, Indonesian region. So you can uh, access this to the uh, our uh, website, yeah, and then uh, so uh, people can understand uh, the uh, type of uh, geo site that uh, uh, exists in their area. Next slide, please. Now, uh, the uh, development of Geopark Park is uh, uh, intended is uh, um, to promote the sustainable development, uh, sustainable tourism that creates jobs and promotes local uh, culture and product. Uh, we hope that this uh, the, the existence of Geopark Park can support this uh, the development of uh, the economic development of the uh, uh, local uh, in the country yeah and uh, then uh, hopes that uh, people within this uh, in surrounding uh, job park can uh, uh, grow up their uh, economic uh, uh, needs next uh, slide please now this is the concept of uh, geotourism yeah that uh, uh, geological based geotourism by prioritizing uh, prioritizing uh, cons conservation and the sustainable uh, principles yeah now in the uh, left, uh, left hand side there will be geological education geological research and geological conservation and geological regulation also geological exploration exploitation now these uh, geological sites yeah will uh, have a, a, a track uh, these uh, uh, some uh, attraction uh, regarding uh, mineral rocks, uh, fossil, ge uh, geological structure, landscape, and other geological uh, features. And uh, but also, uh, 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 except this ge geological uh, geological attraction, we also have a concept for the tourism. Yeah, uh, we need to have a planning and development, uh, marketing promotion, infrastructure development, and sustainable development. And this uh, tourism uh, based on nature uh, tourism especially a special interest nature based uh, tourism culture tour and special event next slide now some important things uh, in the tourism development so we uh, recognize is uh, some uh, elements that are very important uh, to be considered as uh, the development of uh, uh, tourism is a uh, tourism elements uh, tourist attraction supporting and services accessibility and the tourist itself information and promotion is very important to promote uh, the site the geo site uh, that uh, exists in the selected area and tourism factors also tourism uh, analysis is uh, very important to plan and to develop uh, the, the uh, uh, tourism next slide please Uh, here, here are the positive aspect of uh, geotourism. Yeah, uh, is uh, the tourism, especially nature tourism, makes a big uh, contribution as a foreign exchange uh, earner for the country and the local community development. And the uh, tourism, especially nature tourism, generally does not conflict with conservation principle. Yeah, but still require a lot of uh, regulation and uh, supervision. And the other aspect is that uh, tourism, especially natural tourism in Indonesia, is in line with the principle of uh, sustainable uh, development. Uh, and then uh, for public awareness to take uh, advantage of uh, natural resources as a tourist attraction is increasing from uh, year to year. Next slide. Some aspect of the uh, geotourism development in the geopark, yeah. The first is in accordance with the main geopark them and dams and goals. Uh, tourism, geotourism, the development of geotourism need to be uh, uh, synchronized with the main uh, geopark dams, yeah, and then goals. And uh, second is, is the utilization of uh, geosite, biosite, and cultural site uh, component. And the third is the use of geotrail as a complete geotourism uh, route. And fourth, the local community uh, participation. 
So I think uh, four uh, uh, aspect in the geotourism development within the geopark. Next slide, please. Now here is uh, the, the one that uh, is expected to be a locomotive uh, driving system development in the geopark. Yeah, uh, aspect uh, em uh, empowerment integrated uh, geotourism uh, conservation and hazard mitigation. Next slide. Now, uh, this is one aspect that I uh, mentioned earlier about the uh, geotrail and, and make it easier for visitor to get a geotourism experience within the uh, geopark area. So this uh, geotrail will have uh, will make a comfort, safety, satisfaction, and experience uh, enhancement for the uh, tourists. Next slide. So uh, in the geopark also we need uh, to promote yeah we have uh, we need to have a, a, a promotion in order to introduce the uh, uh, geopark yeah this will be uh, can be done by the governments uh, local community uh, local own enterprises yeah uh, travel agent restaurant owner and of a hotel and uh, other things next slide I think that's uh, all uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for the attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for amazing presentations, Bapak Dr. Eko Budirilono. This was really amazing uh, knowledge that we received from his substantive presentations today. So we have uh, concluded that there actually there are five Gs in geotourism, or maybe 5G+. plus. So it consists of geoheritage, geotourism, geopark, geodiversity, and geo. Uh, conservation so it was really wonderful speech so there are also five or sorry eight aspects that actually uh, supported by uh, geotourism is in uh, sustainable development goals programs so that so we uh, it's it's really wonderful to know that Indonesia is a mega diversity country where we can develop geotourism with geotourism geo heritage concept and uh, don't be forget as well, because in geotourism, you need to understand there are some principles that we need to comply with. The first one, we need to uh, make sure that everyone is comfortable to visit the geo heritage or geotourism site. So the safety, the satisfactions of customers, and also experience enhancement. We want to hear more from uh, Bapa Dr. Uh, Eko about uh, there is one concept that I read in geotourism. It's called geo interpretations. Maybe you have any idea what is it? So everyone will learn from it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, could you please answer <laughs> one question related oh. to maybe you have any idea uh, about geo? Uh, geo interpretations in geotourism concept because this is one of uh, I write three G's beside the five G's that you have mentioned earlier so there is one G of three G's uh, consists of geo history and geo interpretation and geo conservation maybe geo interpretations maybe would you like to give a little bit of explanations to the audience so, about this I think uh, the, the can we have a slide, please? Dear colleagues. Yeah, the, the 5G that I mentioned <laughs> is uh, 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 related to geo... Which one? This is uh, the, the first... Uh, yeah, the 5G, yeah? 5G plus, yeah? yeah. This is the geodiversity, geoheritage, and geoconservation 
geotourism and geopark. Yeah. Uh, but there is a concept, it's called geo interpretations uh, in one of the articles. Uh, maybe you give uh, more information about that because there is no in the in this slide. Maybe you have any information on geo interpretation so that everybody will be aware of it today. Okay. This uh, geo interpretation. It is. Uh, I think what we have. We, I, I the, as we understand that the uh, the. Geology of Indonesia is quite unique, yeah. I mentioned earlier that uh, we were formed by the interaction of three major plates, yeah. And, and as a result, we have a positive and uh, a negative aspect, yeah. It's like a coin. In one side, we have positive and negative aspect. No. And uh, in the positive aspect, yeah, one of the positive aspect is the diversity of uh, geosite yeah, or geodiversity we have uh, uh, plenty of uh, geosite yeah with uh, very diverse yeah and then uh, i think that's we need uh, to uh, to understand yeah to to know what's the uh, the the the, uh, the history of or or the meanings of the uh, geosite itself the the occurrence and yeah, the origin and how the process to be uh, geo uh, to be a, a geological future that what as what uh, what we see now uh, the interpretation of the geo, geo geo aspect is quite important in order to understand the the geo, local geology of the area yeah then uh, by understand this uh, we, we can uh, we can know the history how this area uh, occur yeah again then this is this can be a story this can be a uh, like uh can be shared with other people so this the history is quite important and then this will attract people to see uh after understanding the story then they, they will they will see uh the the, the real uh, uh the 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 the, uh, ge the geosite uh, within this uh, the, uh, the area so we we need to interpret yeah what we have what 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 happened or the the history of geodiversity in each in, in the local area so the people can understand and can uh, have an attraction uh, and attract them to go and visit the geodiversity the geosite i mean I think uh, probably uh, at the moment this uh, the explanation. Yeah, thank you very much, Bapak Dr. Eko Budilono, for your presentation and also your answer. It was really amazing presentation, and uh, we are going to move forward to our next panelist, uh, Bapak Dr. G. Martini. He is the president of. UNESCO Global Geopark Council, and in this occasion, he will be delivering his topic in geotourism for sustainable development. Please welcome Mr. Dr. Gimartini. The time is yours. Dear colleagues, I would like to start this presentation, which we are doing together with my colleague Asiari Hilario, by, by going, going back, back a little, little bit to, to the UNESCO Geopark concept and thus in a very simple way. As you have already understood above all, a UNESCO geopark is a territory we must have a geological heritage of international value. In consequence, geoparks are places with a strong presence of the memory of the years. If the geological heritage is essential in a geopark, it is not enough. The territory aspiring to become a UNESCO geopark must also have knowledge and consideration for its other territorial heritage, of its natural heritage. And this concerns, of course, fragile ecosystems, biodiversity, protected area, and so on. Geopark must also consider their cultural heritage, for example, historical monuments, 
elements of traditional architecture, archaeological sites, rock art. Likewise, a geopark must take into account its intangible heritage, which is, without any doubt, the most endangered heritage in the world. Traditional know-how, local languages, tales, legends, cosmogonies, and much more. The geopark must take into consideration around the geological heritage or its territorial heritage, highlighting all the interconnection that may exist between the geological heritage and the other heritage. This different heritage must be intimately connected with the population of the territory so that, thanks to their promotion and their valuation, new policies of sustainable development can be implemented. A UNESCO Geopark must be a living territory with a population proud to live there, with a desire to imagine a different future for this territory. For the sake of clarification, I would like to share with you the semantic of the word geopark. As we all know, since the beginning of humanity, the first sacred sites were mainly geological sites that strongly marked the landscape, such as this mountain called Uluru in Australia, or this mountain in Tibet, which still receive important pilgrimage, or this one in Ethiopia. Much later, the first human civilization developed specific cults dedicated to Mother Earth. To represent air, this prehistoric population creates sculpture of female form, a fertile femininity, and this representation on the screen are around 20,000 years old. This cult of Mother Earth is found in Greek mythology and in Greek language this goddess Mother Earth is called J, Gaia, Geo. From the Geo prefix other words have been developed over the time. Geometry, the measure of the Earth. Geography, the description of the Earth. Geomorphology, the form, the shape of the Earth. And geology, the study of the earth. Consequently, in the name Geopark, we have Geo, which means the earth, mother earth, and park, a park, a zone, a space. Therefore, conceptually, etymologically, and practically, a geopark is absolutely not a geological park, as it is not an opener geological museum. With this definition that we have now in, in common, I would like to invite you to explore in more details some fundamental aspects of UNESCO geoparks. Dear colleagues, dear friends, it is a pleasure for me to share with you some basic ideas and good experiences about the UNESCO Global Geoparks. We are living in a very beautiful planet. After millions of years of natural evolution and after thousands of years of cultural evolution, humans have adapted to live together in this planet. But I would say that things have changed dramatically in the last decades. World population has increased very fast and up to now we are 7.7 .7 billion inhabitants on Earth and more than 50% of the people live in big cities where globalization is the main trend. I would say that cities from different parts of the world and citizens from different parts of the world look more and more the same. We are losing authenticity and somehow we are losing our original identity. And if you permit me, I would also say that we are losing connection. And this is something very important. We are losing connection with our Mother Earth and geoparks can really help 
reconnecting us with our Mother Earth. That is why I think that UNESCO Global Geoparks can really function like lighthouses for a better future in the planet. I think that we can do that because we have something very important. We have something unique. We have the memory of the Earth. Our planet is 4.6 billion years old. And some of the most important chapters of this unbelievable story have been written in the rocks and the landscapes of our geoparks, of our territories. They are part of one of the most important, exciting encyclopedias that have been ever written, which is the history of the Earth. A hundred million years. A scale of time so vast that most of us cannot conceive its actual magnitude. But geologists try. They scrutinize the landscape and analyze every rock fragment in an attempt to understand how we got here and what the planet looked like long before humans made their very recent entry into evolutionary history. For example, we can have unbelievable paleontological sites where fossils are going to tell us about the evolution of life. We can find huge dinosaurs. We can find beautiful ammonites. Even we can find some of the most important paleoanthropological sites that tell us about where we come from and therefore how we can evolve in the future. Olduvai Gorge is a world famous archaeological location in Tanzania, East Africa, and it is widely regarded as the cradle of mankind. It is one of the most important prehistoric sites in the world. Olduvai Gorge carries some of the oldest evidence of the remains of the earliest humans. It is here where Mary and Louis Leakey unearthed the first well-dated artifacts and fossils of the earliest humans, including Zinjanthropus skull, early stone tools, Homo erectus and the larger brained hominin that preceded the earliest modern humans. Paleontological sites tell us also about the five big mass extinction that happened on Earth's history. Ecologists are already telling us that we are living on the sixth big mass extinction. And it is very important for us to understand what happened in the past, to know how we need to behave now in the present and in the future in order to avoid the sixth big mass extinction. Climate change. Climate change is one of the most important challenges that we will have to face in the future. And we will have to do it together. There is no other way. But it is absolutely necessary that we need to understand the real importance and the real relevance of climate change. And for that, we need to understand how the system works and how the climate has been working all along uh, Earth history. In our geoparks, we have geological sites where we can read very well how the climate has been evolving in the last thousands of years or even in the last millions of years. We have sites where we can get very, very valuable information about some of the most important warming events on Earth history. We can learn about the consequences that happened a lot of years ago, and then we can adapt those consequences to the ones that we are expecting now for the next decades. So somehow, geoparks can become into real laboratories to understand what climate change is now and how the climate used to work in the past. The geology, our landscapes, the geology of our landscapes tell us also about something very, very deep. They are telling us that we are living in a dynamic planet, a dynamic planet where even mountains can disappear, a dynamic planet where the continents move, a dynamic planet where the geographies change. It is only a matter of time. And if you permitted me 
This approach, this philosophical approach, help us understanding that the slide of the landscape that we are seeing today is only a very short slide of a much, much longer story of evolution. This philosophical approach also help us understanding that we just arrived to this beautiful planet, that we are very small, but at the same time that we have had the power to change and to destroy many of the ecosystems on Earth. And this is something that we need to reconsider for the present and for the future. We have a huge responsibility. Geoparks are somehow the guardians of the memory of the Earth. We need to work for the conservation of our geological heritage. We're on the western end of the island, amid the remains of a vast forest. But the trees are now stone. It is one of the world's great petrified forests. An ancient volcano covered them in ash. Now, 20 million years later, you can still see their leaves bark and tissues. We need to work for the conservation of our geological heritage, of our natural heritage, of our cultural identity. But geoparks do not have any legal status to work for the protection of this geological heritage. But we have something more important. We have the people. Our strategy is to connect local people with their geological heritage and to make them feel that this geological heritage belongs to them and it's part of a much, much wider heritage that is distributed in all the planet. Our strategy is to put the geological heritage, the natural heritage and the cultural heritage in the center of a development strategy of our territories. After 20 years of experience, we can really say that education and geotourism are very, very useful tools, very effective tools to work for the conservation of our geological heritage. Education is one of our main tools for resilience. Geoparks are territories for the future and therefore geoparks are territories with education. Education is one of the main pillars of any development strategy in any geopark in the world. We have beautiful geoschools in different geoparks, in different countries, in different cultures. And these geoschools are giving us an added value. An added value because they are talking about local nature local landscape, local traditions, local culture. This is somehow a very, very useful tool to promote the pride of belonging to this community. Geo schools are giving us also an added value because since the beginning they work with the sustainable development goals. And this is something very, very important for the integral development of our children. We have beautiful geo schools in different parts of the world. And thanks to the network, to the Global Geoparks Network, they are connected. They can share their experiences and they can even move from one place to the other and having very, very good experiences for them. Even now, during the pandemic, that we cannot travel, geoparks have worked very, very hard on education. 
we have created dozens of different educational programs for our families and our children to be connected with the geopark, to be connected among them. And this is one way to show that education is one of our main tools for resilience in UNESCO Global Geoparks. I am bored and feeling flat. Is there anything fun? At that time, let's go to Mudungshan Global Geopark. You can meet the living geological heritages through various geo-education programs. Then let's find out what there are. First program, Geoschool. At Geoschool, you can learn geology in general such as earthquake, volcano, dinosaurs and more through geosites of Mudungshan area. Students from elementary school, 3rd grade to 6th grade can participate. Second program, Let's Make My Own Fold. At this program, we can find out what shape the earth we live in looks like and make fold structure using rubber clay. Also, we learn that we are a part of nature by meeting the animals and plants living in Kwangchuho Lake. Science and education are again a very, very useful tool to work with the mitigation and adaptation for natural disaster risk. We are living in a powerful dynamic planet and some of our territories are exposed to this natural risk. Some of them are related to climate change, but some of them are not. We are talking about volcanic eruptions or earthquakes or landslides, for example. And in most of the cases, there is nothing we can do to avoid them, but there is much we can do to mitigate their effects. We can do that, for example, by promoting research. Research that will give us some idea of the distribution of the risk in the territories and therefore it can help us planifying how we can react in different places of our territory. And above all, we can define a very accurate reaction plans that can be disseminated among the population and can be included in our geo schools, in our educational programs. So we can really make people understand that they are living in a dynamic planet that can have some risk, so they can understand really which is the risk of the territory they are living and which is the way that they have to react in the moment that the risk is going to happen. By doing this, geoparks have shown that even we can save lives, like it happened in the past in some volcanic eruptions or earthquakes. So geoparks are really territories of resilience. Geoparks are really territories of authenticity. Geoparks are really territories of science, of culture and of education. Geoparks are territories based on the memory of the earth that work for the future of the people. UNESCO geoparks are the new territories of the 21st century. Territory where the memory of the earth weaves links with the memory of human society. Two different time scales that come together to provide to the Geopark territory new sustainable and integrated economic development strategy. UNESCO Geopark do not exist only with their official diploma, diploma that will be hung on a wall and quickly forgotten over the years under the dust. UNESCO Geopark, as I've said before, are living territories in perpetual evolution and in constant research for improvement. They are living territories and territories for dialogue, reflection. And UNESCO Geoparks can only exist with a different concept and a different approach. They can only be created and lived through the full involvement of the local population and thus at all stages of the process, at the level of the creation, definition of the territory, choice of the strategical development, as well as for their management. The creation of UNESCO Geopark must be the result of a true bottom-up process in which the local population, without any exclusion, 
must take part. Creating a successful geopark is a long process. Between the moment of the idea of creating a geopark and the official sending of its candidature to UNESCO, it takes an average time of three to four years, and this, of course, with a complete team dedicated to the project and working full-time on this. Some uh, territories, which have now become UNESCO Geopark, have spent more than eight years of work before submitting their candidatures. The boundaries of the UNESCO Geopark territory must be recognized by its population and must constitute an identity territory understood and accepted by all. All components of the local population must, above all, understand what a UNESCO Geopark project is and what could be its interest for the territory. A successful Geopark project requires its perfect understanding and total ownership by its local population. Here we see an example of an exchange and consultation meeting with the local population of a French UNESCO Geopark. And uh, to obtain the adapted involvement of the population, this Geopark organized such meeting twice a year in each of the 60 municipalities of its territory. Je pense que cette intervention a été utile pour informer les gens de, de l'existence des géoparcs. Parce que beaucoup de gens, en fait, ne savent pas ce que c'est que ce parc. Aujourd'hui, j'ai appris que les géoparcs rassemblaient beaucoup, beaucoup de, de cultures, d'habitudes de, des régions, des, des pays. Finalement, on est très fiers d'habiter cette région. Et après, ça donne envie d'aider. Euh, tous ceux qui justement font la recherche, euh, se dévouent avec passion, euh, on l'a entendu ce soir avec passion finalement, c'est même plus une question d'argent, c'est de la passion. Donc, euh, alors s'il y avait un petit peu d'argent avec la passion, quand même, ça aiderait pas mal quoi. Donc on rêve quand même un petit peu qu'on soit un peu plus aidé pour continuer à rechercher les belles choses de notre territoire. The involvement of the local population in a geopark process is fundamental. And this is even more true when the geopark has in its population the presence of indigenous population. Almost 30% of UNESCO Geopark have an indigenous population and thus in Africa, America and Asia. Inside the eight articles of the official guidelines of UNESCO Geopark, two of these articles are specifically devoted to indigenous populations and they underline the need to integrate this population in all stages of a geopark project and in its management. These articles also stress the importance of having the geopark strongly involved in the preservation of their culture as well as for their empowerment. Many new geoparks around the world, mostly in developing countries, are very fortunate to have indigenous population. Some uh, geoparks even present one of the greatest human diversity in the world. For example, in North Vietnam, 18 any groups live in the UNESCO Dong Van Geopark, which has only an area of 2,000 square kilometers. Indigenous peoples are among the most vulnerable groups of people in the world today. A large part of them are in a precarious situation. And you know perfectly that UNESCO places the needs of these peoples among its priority areas. A UNESCO Geopark must be aware of its responsibility towards the indigenous population living in its territory and must fully work to defend and consolidate their full participation, their cultural identity and their fundamental rights. 
This involvement and participation of the population in a geopark process is also necessary to ensure one of its primary mission, which is to bring new, sustainable and integrated economic development to its population. You have already understood that a territory a geopark is not only a conservation area, but above all, a sustainable development area. Of course, one of the first tools of this sustainable economic development is linked with uh, tourism, or rather, geotourism. Geotourism is defined as tourism that supports and improves the identity of a territory, taking into account its geology, its environment, its culture, its aesthetic values, its heritage, and the well-being of its resident. Geological tourism is just one of the various components of geotourism. We are talking about geotourism, about sustainable and integrated tourism, which is totally different and I would like to say opposed to what is a destructive mass tourism which is unsustainable, as it was unfortunately been demonstrated in the past and once again dramatically during this COVID epidemic. With geotourism, we are talking about respectful tourism, where the inhabitants developed, for example, quality accommodation, structures of small capacity, favoring traditional architecture. A tourism where the inhabitants, true ambassadors of the geopark, are trained as guides and share with tourists not only their knowledge, but also their culture, their know-how, their traditions. Thus, visitors will be able to enjoy a unique experience in the geopark, a real journey through time and space, through the time of the years and that of human societies. But tourism, or rather geotourism, is fortunately not the only economic development tool of a geopark. Some territories are not suitable for receiving tourists for many reasons. Reasons of lack of equipment, access difficulties, or protection needs. In this case, it is therefore necessary to develop alternatives so that these territories can benefit from appropriate sustainable economical development. One of the important strategies developed by Geopark is the enhancement and promotion of local products. These local products, selected on the basis of quality criteria established by the Geopark, benefit from the Geopark image and can acquire high added value such as new geographical distribution. The Geopark in this pro process must put in place not only the criteria, but the necessary means to ensure the promotion of these products through websites, regional, national or international organization of its uh, uh, local products and so on. For example, the UNESCO Geopark de la Catalunya Central in Spain organized a large gastronomic fair presenting the labelled products of the Geopark by inviting participants to uh, testing game. Thung Pru, he is a director of the uh, UNESCO Global Geo Park. And uh, we both are uh, visiting here because he's taking us to meet and talk with the uh, local community groups as a stool uh, um, uh, Geo Park, which is uh, promoting the sale uh, of the local products from the communities and its network to different activities. So here is one part. I'm going to ask him about how does Geo, um, Global Geo Park of the Seoul helping the people in promoting the product of the people. UNESCO Geo Parks are unique territories 
which can only exist and function in an inclusive way. They are inclusive territories, first of all in terms of their heritage. In a geopark, the cultural heritage, both tangible and intangible, their natural heritage meet a new meaning and coherence thanks to their new connection with the geological heritage. Geological heritage, which was, in the still recent past, totally absent from territorial development plans and strategy. Geoparks are also inclusive territories at the level of their population, which has to participate without any exclusion in the definition of the geopark territory, its process and its vision for the future. In a UNESCO geopark, geology in itself is not an end, but a mean, a bridge. Geology brings us a knowledge, an understanding of the Earth, its past, its evolution, the, its mechanism, and constitutes a new door to understand in another way the world in which we live. New territories of the 21st century, the UNESCO Geopark, are territories, memory of the years. They are territories of research, culture, economic development, and because they are inclusive territories, they are territories of resilience with a population who takes pride in living there and who builds a different future. UNESCO Geopark must be living territories territories of project, territories of cohesion and social peace, territories of meaning, the territories of tomorrow. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for a wonderful video presentation from Dr. Guy Martini. But don't worry, he's here now with us. Uh, uh, Dr. Guy Martini, are you here with us today? Of course, oh, I am wonderful. here. Wonderful, it was really interesting presentations. Salamat pagi, salam alaikum to all of you, dear colleagues and dear friends from Indonesia. Yeah, so uh, I'm so sorry if I mispronounce uh, your uh, your name. Is it right, Guy Martini, or maybe you want to correct me? You are perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we, he will be with us here today in the question and answer section. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gay Martini. We'll see you again in question section. All right, so uh, we now being more knowledgeable about Geopark, especially we know that our Earth is now 4.6 billion years old, it's quite old, ladies and gentlemen. But now we are losing our, our authenticity, our connections with Mother Earth, so that geotourism uh, is a very good way to visit in order to embrace our Earth again and to reconnect with our Mother Earth, of course, with the involvement with local communities and also with education. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's step to the next presentation from our last but not least panelist for panel session today, Dr. Hans Denker Thostra. Uh, so, but because he's now in Denmark, so we have like a different time zone. So he will be delivering his presentation in video presentation. So he's the senior program specialist for water and environmental science, UNESCO Regional Be Science Bureau of Asia, Asia Pacific. And in this occasion, he will be, be delivering his topics in terms of the role of UNESCO design at its sites in promoting sustainable tourism. So please. Please welcome Dr. Hans Denker Thilstrup. The time is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my, my pleasure, pleasure to once, once again uh, address you uh, here at the Eutourism Fest 2021. 2021. Uh, this, this time, time I'm going to talk uh, about the subject of UNESCO designated sites and sustainable tourism. And for that purpose, I would uh, like to uh, request your understanding as I share with you uh, my screen. I'm going to do that uh, in a minute, and that'll allow me to take you through uh, a couple of slides relating to, to this topic. 
So as I mentioned, we will talk a little bit about UNESCO designated sites and sustainable tourism. You will already have heard from the other uh, distinguished speakers this morning about uh, geotourism in more specific terms. So we would like to take this opportunity to draw your attention a bit to the notion of UNESCO designated sites and how they relate to sustainable tourism. Now we have in UNESCO three global site-based networks with different qualities and different aspects, uh, all contributing towards a combined whole, a combined set of objectives that I'll talk to you about in just a minute. But just to recap for those of you who may not be familiar in detail with these concepts, they are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Here in Indonesia, they include, uh, of course, places like Borobudur and Prambanan and the temple complexes on the cultural heritage sites and uh, sites like the tropical rainforest heritage of Sumatra, which includes the habitats for the iconic uh, Sumatran uh, orangutan uh, elephant uh, tiger um, and the rhino. We then have UNESCO biosphere reserves. Uh, these are places that connect uh, people and nature with a particular focus on living with uh, the world's biodiversity and biological uh, resources. And we then have the newest UNESCO category, the UNESCO Global Geoparks, uh, which you as geoheritage, geotourism uh, experts and practitioners will be perhaps most familiar with. But let me just take you a little bit uh, through some of the similarities and differences uh, between these different uh, site categories. So together, UNESCO Global Geoparks, Biosphere Reserves and World Heritage Sites they celebrate our heritage. Different aspects of that heritage are focused on in each program, but they all have as their underlying purpose to celebrate this heritage, to conserve the world's cultural, biological, and geological diversity, and to promote sustainable economic development. So UNESCO designated sites are not only about conserving cultural, biological, and geological diversity, they are also about celebrating that diversity, that heritage, and they are about promoting sustainable economic development. And it's very important that we have all of these three aspects in uh, those sites. So biosphere reserves, they focused on the harmonized management of biological and cultural diversity. They look at the relationship between people and the living environment, how to understand that relationship better, and how to strengthen that relationship. If we can understand how we live with nature, then we can improve how we live with nature. And that's the basic foundation of the biosphere reserves. World Heritage Sites, they promote the conservation of natural and cultural sites of outstanding universal value. They recognize places that are so special that their significance is not only of importance, maybe local or national level, but they are places that are so significant, so special, that they are of interest, of concern to the entire world. And then we have UNESCO Global Geoparks, which give international recognition to sites that promote the importance and the significance of protecting the Earth's geodiversity through actively engaging with its local communities. So the focus there is on protecting the geodiversity but doing that by actively engaging with local communities. Altogether, there are more than 2,000 UNESCO designated sites distributed around the world. They encourage local communities, national governments, the world community, the global community, UNESCO itself, to work together to ensure the conservation and sustainable use for future generations. And very importantly, this encouragement, this commitment is not only for what happens within those sites, within the geoparks, within the biosphere reserves or world heritage sites, but the basic principles of looking after the environment, the geological, biological, and cultural heritage should apply not only within the sites, but in a more general sense in society at large. And that's a very important uh, point with these UNESCO designated sites. And then the 
Figure to the right, you can see the sort of distribution of the, the, the sites in terms of the numbers. This slide is a few pictures a few years old, so the values have shifted a little bit. But you have the, the most visible sites perhaps represented as, a, as an iceberg here. World Heritage Sites, you have natural World Heritage Sites. If we look at the sites that relate to nature, uh, at about 28% of the total natural related sites, then 70% biosphere reserves, there are more than 700 of them in the world now. And then Geoparks as the newest, the youngest UNESCO site category, still only about 2%, but that number is, is growing and has already uh, grown since then. So three sites, three types of designation, all with these common objectives. So how do we look in Indonesia? We have, uh, at this point, uh, we have 19 UNESCO biosphere reserves under the Man in the Biosphere uh, program. Uh, we have, in fact, six UNESCO global geoparks under the International Geosciences and Geoparks program, nine World Heritage Sites under the 1972 World Heritage Convention. So altogether, that uh, gives us 34 sites across Indonesia from Gunung Loisa uh, in Aceh to Lawrence in Papua. They help and they confer recognition to more than 5 million hectares of Indonesia's most important forest areas, uh, but also uh, its geological heritage, significant geological sites, uh, significant sites for uh, research, uh, sites that are significant for Indonesia's contribution to the SDGs, to the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, and to other international commitments. And very importantly, each of those sites represent an open-ended and lasting commitment by the government of Indonesia, by UNESCO, as well as by the local authorities and managers and communities to the sustainable management of those sites in accordance with these three instruments. Now, before looking a bit more specifically at tourism, I thought it would be important to see what are the benefits of a UNESCO designation. And this is a very big question and there is no single answer to it. Uh, I've taken an example here from India where uh, the, the benefits of a World Heritage designation at a specific site were, were, were tabled as follows. I think for all the three site categories, a UNESCO designation gives international attention on the need for preservation and conservation. I think there is a possibility with a UNESCO designation to attract international attention to key conservation issues at the site. The site designation also brings with it enhanced visibility and greater tourism development potential. And that, of course, brings with it economic benefits to the host country and the local area. And this is maybe, and if we look at the Indonesian context, the most uh, recognized, perhaps, and most, uh, most uh, desired uh, benefit, this idea that with the designation and with the international attention, there is a possibility, of course, to develop uh, tourism along with. UNESCO designation may also provide additional possibilities for uh, fundraising, to restore, to preserve, to train, to, to look after the, the site for which the designation has been uh, obtained. It's also a possibility to promote uh, national and local pride in the natural, logical, or human-made uh, wonders of a given country and site. The designation also provides close ties with the United Nations system and the prestige and support that can be obtained through that association. It provides access to global project management resources. There's a possibility to seek assistance from UNESCO and from other donors to address issues around UNESCO designated sites. And the designation can facilitate partnerships between government, private sector, NGOs to achieve conservation goals. And there are examples, for example, in China, where UNESCO helps to manage a very large scale private sector funding to support the, the protection of UNESCO designated sites. And there is protection in, in the case of World Heritage under the Geneva Convention, for example, against destruction or misuse during wartime. So these are a World Heritage example from India 
But many of these uh, uh, benefits, in fact, are also valid for, uh, for other UNESCO designations as well. So if we can sort of summarize the guiding principles of what we can do and what we should do in the UNESCO designated site, I mean, we should certainly preserve, protect and present, show what each location is about. We should respect the social and cultural identity of the communities that make the site their home. And we should ensure sustainable long-term development with benefits that are fairly distributed. And I think we can, in a way, look at those basic principles as a foundation for the kind of sustainable tourism uh, undertaking development that we can consider the UNESCO designated sites. Now, to sum up what UNESCO designated sites are in terms of this, this tourism potential, I think we can, we can confirm, we can summarize that UNESCO designated sites are important travel destinations. If they are managed appropriately, they have great potential impact for local economic development and long-term sustainability. Uh, when a site is considered for UNESCO status, it's often because it has particular features that make it either of outstanding universal value or a World Heritage Site, or features that, that give it particular unique significance in terms of geoheritage or in terms of its biodiversity. Those, at the same time, are places that are important travel destinations. They are places that people would be interested to, to see and to experience. When approaching tourism development, this must be on a dialogue with stakeholder cooperation platform where planning for tourism and heritage management is integrated at the destination-wide level. The natural, geological, and cultural assets are valued and protected, and tourism is developed in a way that is appropriate to the local context. And I think we are beginning to see in the now six years since the establishment of the UNESCO Global Geopark category uh, that, that we are starting to see this not only happening, but also being documented around the world. Geotourism itself is very closely related with the very notion of UNESCO Global Geoparks. The creation of innovative local enterprises, new jobs, and high quality training courses is stimulated as new sources of revenue are generated through geotourism, while geological resources of the area are protected. That is a quotation from uh, the UNESCO Global Geoparks website, this idea that geotourism provides a source of revenue which is integrated carefully with the local community and in the overall context of protection of the geological resources. So we have a very clear association of geotourism with the objective, the very definition of the UNESCO Global Geoparks. And you can see on the left side of this slide, I've included an image from a the European Geoparks Network a magazine, a special issue on geoparks as sustainable tourism destinations. Uh, I think for Indonesia, for Rinjani Lombok, it would perhaps be very interesting to look at these experiences in the uh, European Geopark Network, which has a very long uh, history in how they are looking at sustainability from a tourism perspective and approaching those, uh, uh, this uh, public profile that places sustainable tourism as, as, uh, as the, the most visible uh, and highly, highly sought public uh, profiles. I'll come back to that in a, in a few minutes. Now, even though geotourism are, is often a key consideration in the establishment of a UNESCO Global Geopark, it's part of the motivation often to establish a UNESCO Global Geopark. It's very important that the development of that tourism is carefully aligned with the overall objective of the Geoparks concept, because we are, of course, always looking for UNESCO Global Geoparks to be managed in a holistic concept of protection, education, and sustainable development. So the development is one element, but we have to have that go hand in hand with education, and with protection of the resource. If we don't look after the geological heritage that we are trying to show, to showcase, to present, we won't have it 
in the longer term. And we will lose also the potential revenue from sustainable tourism if we don't look after the resource well enough. But how do we go about attaining that balance? Uh, I took here an example from World Heritage, and I've put uh, the URL above for the UNESCO World Heritage and Sustainable Tourism Program. I think this is one place where uh, a very uh, large suite of resources are available that you may be interested in to look at how to develop sustainable tourism around UNESCO designated site. Of course, this doesn't mean that biosphere reserves and UNESCO global geoparks don't have uh, significant tourism experiences and potential, they do. But I think this uh, World Heritage and Sustainable Tourism program has the, the largest uh, collection of guidance, documents, uh, cases that uh, will be of, of interest uh, to you. And I just took a few, uh, few lines from this uh, program that may be of interest in terms of developing uh, tourism concepts, sustainable tourism concepts here in Indonesia and in the wider region. But the key idea, of course, is to develop a tourism that affects you in the future, that makes, to make it what you want it to be and what you need it to be, the idea of sustainability around tourism. Now, in order to do that, you need to do an honest assessment of the, of the product of the tourism uh, concept that you wish to be. You have to ensure that the natural and heritage values uh, are protected, are managed sustainably. You have to invest in appropriate and sustainable infrastructure that does not have a negative impact on the site and the values that you are trying to protect. You need to invest in storytelling and in experiences, and I'll come back to that as well in a second. And you need to bring things together through story. You need an endorsement of that story. And I keep coming back to this word of, of story. It's something that is discussed a lot under this World Heritage and Sustainable Tourism program. And I think it's a very, uh, it's a very good word to use because, of course, when you want to invite someone to your place, to your geopark, to your location, you want to tell them a story. And it's important that that story in, in your mind is clear, that you know, and that your local communities, the people around you, that everybody understands, appreciates, and owns that story, the vision of the site that you are bringing people to. You need to empower local people, local businesses, and make sure that they are an integrated part of your planning. And that, of course, means also that you plan sustainably, and that you manage sustainably for the long term. So these are some of the steps that need to be taken. And again, I encourage you to have a look at the resources available in the UNESCO World Heritage and Sustainable Tourism uh, Program, and uh, very uh, useful, I think, for, for all UNESCO designations and, and other designations as well. I wanted just to, to come back, as I promised, to this notion of story and of connecting places. I, I put here uh, some resources from something called the World Heritage Journeys. Uh, this is a, a, an initiative uh, that invites travelers to uh, travel along for cultural heritage itineraries, uh, Royal Europe, Ancient Europe, Romantic Europe, Underground Europe, that tell different but intertwined and interconnected stories of Europe's heritage and history. So this is a very European project. Uh, it's in terms of the geography and theme. Uh, you wouldn't do the same here necessarily, but I could very easily imagine, let's say, the geological heritage of Indonesia journey, where we look at the Ring of Fire, at the geological history and the geological significance of the islands of the Indonesian archipelago, or the wider Southeast Asia as well. I think there is excellent potential for these sort of connected histories, promoting the sites by connecting them with one another. So in this case, uh, visit worldheritage.com. They have a website that can help travelers plan journey around the different, uh, different locations, we have 34 uh, destinations in Europe to, to explore in depth. And when this was developed, it was done working with site managers, local communities, businesses, stakeholders. So everybody had a stake and an interest in promoting this story, this journey, this concept. Uh, it offers special access to hidden secret, uh, local secrets and ideas to give the traveler 
uh, a feeling of being part of something special. And I think that concept has significant potential. It is a way to leverage the fact that you are part of a net, a view parts or, or network, biosphere reserve network. And that network has a story to it and it has uh, a shared strength that you can access by linking with one another. So here is just an idea of, uh, of how uh, we perhaps develop. And of course, we have in Asia, Asia Pacific view parts network, we have very good uh, organizations participating here with us today that may be interested in promoting these sorts of networks. So a few comments in, in closing before I, I wrap up uh, today. I wanted just to, to leave you with a few words that to me have been, have been significant, especially over the last uh, months. Uh, we have seen in a way how the COVID-19 pandemic has forced us to find new ways of coexisting with nature. I think we've seen that we are in a way stretching our relationship with nature to the limit. So we need to look at ways that we can generate livelihoods, generate long-term sustainability in a way that ensures that we have a sustainable, long-term, really good relationship with uh, our surroundings, with the, the Earth as sustainable. And I think as an emerging and a growing field, geoheritage, geotourism can play a significant role in an eventual recovery from the pandemic. And one of the ways that it does this is it's in telling the story of our relationship to the earth itself, the geology that forms the, the basis of, of the living environment uh, that interacts with it. Now there is no one approach fits all to development of sustainable tourism at any given site. Local conditions, priorities, uh, uh, cultural considerations, limitations, and advantages all have to be considered with priority. So I've given you some very simple uh, ideas for how to approach that, but really the, the each site has to develop, a, in a way, a bottom-up approach that is unique and, uh, and designed, tailored in an appropriate way to that given site and its people and its communities. Now, it's no secret, and we've seen certainly in Indonesia and in many countries around the world at uh, this time of year with World Heritage Committee meetings, that UNESCO designated sites, World Heritage sites in particular, they generate considerable global attention. They certainly bring opportunities for promoting tourism, sustainable tourism, generating income, but they also represent something I, I referred to a bit earlier, which is this idea of a multi-layered commitment local communities, and managers, national authorities, UNESCO, its member states, to the long-term sustainability of the site. And I think it's very important. We can celebrate when we, when we achieve a new site, uh, when, a, when a biosphere reserve or UNESCO Global Geopark is designated, we celebrate that achievement. But really, that achievement is the starting point. It's not the goal. It's a wonderful milestone, but it's a it's a starting point for where the responsibilities and the opportunities really begin. The Geoparks uh, program, UNESCO Global Geoparks uh, program, of course, has a very rigorous revalidation process. So in a way, if you become a geopark, you know that you will very soon uh, have to show that you are still uh, living up to your vision of what it means to be a UNESCO Global Geopark. Uh, I think that's, that's very healthy, uh, and I think we do have Keep this in mind all the time that we, we, we are only starting when we have when we have designation and we then need to think what does this mean for us what is our story what do we want to tell as a UNESCO designated site and with that I would like to thank you very much for your attention these uh, minutes I it's been a pleasure for me to, to share just a few informal thoughts with you and I look forward to the opportunity to interact with you as well uh, uh, in the discussion uh, to follow today. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, have an excellent continued uh, view tourism fest uh, and we look forward to interacting with you. Thank you very much. Really amazing uh, video presentation so that we are now being more knowledgeable about 
UNESCO designated sites in the world. We already have 2,000 of them in the world and 33 sites across Indonesia. What a wonderful world we have. So uh, there are also the benefits to be the uh, UNESCO designated areas, like we are going to have uh, preservation, funds, promotion, resource management, partnership, and so on. So those are the benefits if our places are uh, have been uh, designated, designated as UNESCO designated site. So really, thank you very much, really appreciate it. Now we already have Dr. Hans with us here. Uh, we want to say hello to Dr. Hans. Are you here now? Uh, it's down in Denmark, isn't it? That's correct. I yeah, mean, so uh, really that. wonderful to see you here and it must be very hard to wake up at the downtime. So we really appreciate it, uh, Dr. Hans. So we're going to have our question and answer session for our distinguished three keynote speakers who will be asked some questions. There are a lot of questions coming in from our participants who are excited to ask some questions. Okay, so for the first questions, I will read from uh, Lalu Kuku Mahendra, Universitas Mataram. So this question is for uh, Dr. Gimartini. Um, so he is asking about, uh, could you please show us the role of Geopark to mitigate and address a uh, Climate crisis. So we are, as a member of Rinjani Geopark Youth Forum, can take role to accelerate the government program. So please, Dr. Gay Martini, uh, to answer the question. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you for, for for the question. Mitigation of climate change is a, is a priority for not only for Geopark for the planet, but Geoparks need to assume a necessary role important first role consists in a, in a good awareness of the population explaining what it means and trying to find with the population simple action daily actions easy to organize which can contribute slowly but surely to planet mitigation so you know that uh, symbolically each year all geoparks are participating in the 19th of uh, September on the International Day of Cleaning Up the Planet. It's a symbolic event where everybody together is trying to clean the planet. This is one day, but it's not enough. It's necessary that in the geopark, the population the world taking care of waste management, recycling, plastic pollution. And by that, Geopark can contribute to mitigate climate change. Also, Geopark can act, also asking them questions about their energy consumption and trying where it's possible to utilize our green energy, trying to work more on water consumption, trying to develop the use of electric vehicles and so on. So there is a huge quantity of action, but the best way, it, it can be complex for Joe Park, I know, to say, what can I do? Begin slowly, at the smallest level, and just beginning to work on waste management, plastic pollution is a good contribution. And uh, you know perfectly that in uh, everywhere in the world, but in South Asia, we have a big problem of, of uh, plastic bottle contamination everywhere. There are millions of bottles in the nature each year. So, for example, in Vietnam, they are trying to working on uh, uh, finding a system to replace this plastic bottle by, by uh, glass bottle and develop another kind of economy. So these small examples are easy to create and can be very helpful on climate change mitigation. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you for the answer, Dr. Gay Martini. So the most important point here is we need to work together with local community and raise their awareness in terms of waste management and other things, small things, but to preserve our Mother Earth. So our second questions are for Dr. Um, from Dr. Hans, from uh, Bapak Putrawan Habibi from STP Mataram. So the question is, is there any evaluation tools to assess the sustainable tourism development in Geopark? If not, then how do we know that the tourism development is sustainable? Please, Dr. Hans, thank you. Thank you very, <coughs> thank you very much for the, for the question. I think perhaps, uh, in fact, Dr. Martini may be, uh, may be uh, better to, to respond. Um, in, in terms of the, of course, as you know, the evaluation uh, protocols in place for all geoparks parts are, are quite comprehensive. I made a reference to this in my talk as well, because I think if we look at the UNESCO designated sites, uh, in fact, the, the geoparks are as a new site category, uh, I think have a very strong uh, monitoring and evaluation framework. So. There is uh, assistance and advice available to geoparks to ensure that they develop and that they function in a way that is sustainable and in line with the, the, the basic objectives of the, of the geoparks, uh, UNESCO Global Geopark Program. Of course, tourism uh, and the tourism activities uh, in, in and of themselves could require a whole separate uh, set of evaluation in, in, in detail. And in fact, I think the, the, I mean, this may be something, again, if, uh, if we can allow Dr. Martini to, to also uh, answer the question. Um, I think this is something which, which, uh, which is part of the DUPAX evaluation, but it's not the central focus or sole focus of, of the evaluation of the DUPAX as such. Tourism, uh, sustainable geotourism plays an important role in what the, the DUPAX does, but of course, it's not the sole focus, it's one uh, a sphere of activity and one important component. Um, so, uh, yeah, perhaps I could, uh, if I can, uh, if I can ask Dr. Martini maybe to complement this uh, response with with maybe some more perspective on on the on the how tourism or sustainable tourism in in particular is addressed within the due parts evaluation. He's probably the most experienced person uh, uh, I could imagine to to respond to. Well. Uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, even if we are in other part of, of, of the world. I think that you have perfectly answered to, to the question. Of course, uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Hans was saying, uh, I mean, uh, sustainable uh, geotourism, sustainable tourism is just one part of, uh, of the evaluation. That maybe uh, I, I would like to, to uh, add to uh, Dr. Hans Coleman, is a necessity to develop inside Geopark clear and strong partnership with all the tourism actors. It can be done like that. And for that, Geopark has to define criteria to select partners, has to define a, moni a monitoring system of its partner, and define which kind of commitment the partner and the geopark will have in the future. Partnership is a key of a quality geotourism tourism in the geopark. And it's uh, also the big difference between geopark and other territory. So I know that in, the, in Indonesia, they, they have already developed partnership. I would like to encourage only our colleagues to develop more clear agreement with partner, with restaurant, with tour operators, with guest, guest house, with restaurant, defining the criteria and defining training session and all that. By that, we, they will ensure an adapted and different uh, sustainable development for the territory in the future. It's, uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Hans. 
Thank you very much from uh, the answer from Dr. Hans and also additional information from Dr. Gay Martini. And it was really wonderful, wonderful answer, especially uh, for assessment tools, maybe Geopark itself could define its criteria by working together through partnership with different stakeholders. Okay, so the final question is uh, for, for Dr. Eko Budilano. So this is from Media Octaviani from University of Pajajaran. The question is, what are the challenges in developing geo heritage into geo tourism in Indonesia? Please, your time, Bapa Dr. Eko. Papa, Dr. Eko, are you still with us here today? I think there is a little bit of unstable connection from uh, our keynote speaker, Papa, Dr. Eko. I think we're going to another question. So this is from uh, Herlina, the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, uh, for Papa. Dr. Guy Martini and Dr. Hans Thelstrup. Uh, the question is, so this is for both of you, is there any collaboration or partnership opportunities in terms of geopark development or human capital training offered by GGN and also UNESCO? Please, thank you. Hans, do, do you want to answer? Who will uh, answer first? Uh, Dr. Gay? Dr. Gay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, if yeah. we are speaking about training provided by UNESCO and JJN, I would like to, to recall that uh, UNESCO and JJN are organizing each year intensive course on Geopark. Uh, before the pandemic, we get uh, uh, one uh, intensive course in Lesbos, in Greece. It's a long course, it is 15 days. Uh, course and the other one uh, more for Asia is organized by your colleagues in uh, in China in Beijing with each time the visit and the presence inside one Chinese jobber so two training course from two years at least the course of Lesbos is digital and uh, it's a, it's a good adapt adaptation, I think, of the JGN because this digital course, in fact, open uh, higher uh, participation. For example, this year we, we get 300 participants from all the world, and and we get from Afghanistan, from Pakistan, who were sharing with us 15 days of formation. So this course exists. Uh, all our colleagues are invited to participate, and I guess that next year we will follow on a formula, hybrid formula, like for for your Geo Festival, with a part of presential and a part in digital. Also, UNESCO has a mentoring program. It means that uh, it's a special grant that is given to uh, some uh, aspiring geopark to spend uh, two weeks or three weeks in an experience at Geopark to exchange with the team to see how the work is, is going on and, uh, and to learn more on Geopark. So this is, uh, at this moment, the main tools that uh, UNESCO and JJN are offering to colleagues who want to learn more on Geopark. I don't know, Hans, if you want to add something? Yes, I, I think you've already uh, summarized very well. If I could add, it would only be to really uh, encourage uh, uh, anyone interested to to sign up or to to express interest in these courses. They are really high quality uh, uh, courses, uh, uh, very well designed, very very excellent materials. Uh, both of the the course in in, uh, in Lesbos in, in Greece and the course in 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 China. It's been I've had the, the pleasure of. Of interacting with both events and and I've really been been very impressed. I think it's a 
it's a good opportunity uh, to to take part in and uh, and very good content a good experience so i would really encourage you to find more information and and to join these courses also the mentoring program and now of course the 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 challenges in terms of the mobility and uh, and the traveling and visiting each other but uh, but this uh, i think we are looking for the other unesco site categories like the the biosphere reserves to work more with uh, these uh, mentoring uh, arrangements and uh, exchanges between more experienced sites and uh, and the newer sites and i think it's it's a very beneficial way of uh, working so just to to reinforce and really encourage uh, everyone to, to to find out more and to, to join these uh, these opportunities Okay, thank you very much for the answer. And so we have already listened to our three keynote speakers. And unfortunately, this is our, eventually we reached to our final minutes of panel sessions. Uh, so, Bapa, we still have time for one question, I think, to answer for Bapa uh, Dr. Budi, Eko Budi. Uh, so the question, is from Maria Octavianti from University of Pajajaran. So the question is, what are the challenges in developing geoheritage into geotourism in Indonesia? Please uh, have your time, Bapa, to answer. Uh, uh, excuse me, Bapa, Doc, Bapa Dr. Budi, are you still with us here? So can you uh, hear yeah. our voices? Sorry, I am, yes. Yeah, so uh, would okay. you like me to uh, can, repeat? Can you hear now? Yeah, repeat. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, uh, the, 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 the signal is uh, weak here, yeah, up yeah, and down, yeah. so sometimes I lost the connection with you, so <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> really problem. the... Uh, no don't really understand the question, but uh, the challenge is uh, in in uh, developing the geo heritage. Yeah, is the I think uh, according to our experience, we we need to have a similar uh, perception or understanding about the uh, uh, geological sites. Yeah, and the uh, the uh, geodiversity as well, and how to uh, uh, make. Or how to propose the geo heritage? Yeah, uh, this is quite important in order to uh, uh, to speed up yeah the uh, the, the process of uh, validation. As a uh, according to the president uh, uh, minister re regulation that this the uh, energy uh, ministry of energy and mineral resources in this case is a geological agency or badan geology as a mandate to validate to validate uh, geo heritage and and also a geo, uh, geo park yeah the uh, according to presidential uh, the regulation uh, about the geo, geo uh, park that the uh, geo heritage is a basis to uh, propose the geo park so i think it's quite a uh, uh, position uh, critical to understand uh, have a similar uh, perception about uh, the uh, uh, how to how to uh, propose our uh, geo heritage yeah to understand the uh, geo heritage and also geo uh, geological uh, sites itself i think uh, that's uh, the uh, my explanation Thank you very much, Bapa Dr. Eko. So uh, these are the final questions that we have today for our panelists. But before we close our panel session today, in this afternoon, we are going to listen a closing statement from each distinguished keynote speakers. Maybe we're going to start from Dr. Hans, please. Thank you very much, and thank you for, for the opportunity to, to participate in this uh, in this distributed uh, panel around the world, I, I think in fact in, in my in my talk I, I wanted to to end on on these uh, few observations that I think are, are, are particularly important. I, I think to me there's no question that uh, geotourism, geo heritage, geotourism, 
uh, has a, a tremendous uh, potential to show us and to help uh, to help us uh, con establish um, a more sustainable and uh, and uh, and a better way of uh, of the way that we live with nature, with our geological heritage, with our with our geoparks, and also to show how we can uh, establish and support sustainable livelihoods, not only within the geoparks themselves, but in the in the society at large. So I, I want to encourage uh, all participants here that really th this is an area where we have a potential to make a, a, a big difference. I also want to make a small small comment concerning the the, uh, the uh, achievement of a geopark, a UNESCO Global Geopark status, UNESCO designated site status. So really, to to of course congratulate that we had again this year new Indonesian Global Geopark. It's a it's a fantastic achievement. Um, and then also just to, to remind uh, everyone, of course, that that achievement is really, it's the starting point. That's now you have this, uh, this status. So then we really have to, to, to work to make, it, uh, to make it real, to make the sustainability and uh, the future of the field park happen um, and uh, live up to this uh, designation and also to set new standards. And I want also I need to congratulate the organizers of, of this EU Fest. Because I think we are showing by, by organizing events like this, you are helping to set that standard to keep this uh, international exchange uh, uh, happening uh, to look for uh, greater levels of, uh, of equality, greater levels of implementation. So I think you are, you are really showing the way uh, by, by doing this. So congratulations to, to all and thank you again for the opportunity to Thank you for the interesting final statement. So we're going to have uh, another final statement or closing statement from Dr. Eko Budilono first uh, before Dr. Gay Martini to give his fine closing statement. Please, Dr. Eko, you, you have any uh, final statement? Thank you. Uh, terima kasih. So uh, from the government, as the government side, yeah, we are the Badan Geology or Geological Essency. Uh, facilitates all the uh, local government to uh, uh, develop their uh, ge geological uh, potential uh, potentiality in their area yeah uh, such as uh, 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 proposing uh, geo uh, heritage yeah so uh, we, we, we we like to have a uh, uh, we, we, we support actually we support all the uh, uh, local government uh, in uh, uh, developing the uh, geoheritage as well as uh, geopark so uh, for example we we are uh, building uh, uh, the geological uh, information center yeah uh, for a three or uh, four a geological center each year so the, the government uh, allocate a uh, budget to build this uh, center of uh, the uh, geological uh, center well in, uh, information center in order to support the uh, uh, the development of geopark in uh, in the uh, in the local uh, government so uh, basically we welcome if uh, the uh, uh, support from uh, is uh, from the local uh, government yeah and uh, i think uh, we also uh, grateful uh, to the uh, steering committee the organizing committee uh, who uh, hold this uh, 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 event yeah for giving us opportunity to uh, attend this uh, uh, very good event i think thank you very much Thank you so much, Bapak Dr. Eko, for supporting this event as well. And uh, the final uh, statement, uh, last but not least, from Dr. Guy Martini, please. Well, uh, uh, first, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, my colleagues, all the Ministry of Tourism from Indonesia, our colleagues from Vanjani, for this uh, for this organization of Geo Festival. It's a second session. It's very professional, it's a success, and it's for us a fantastic example of resilience inside the geopark. And in the Global Geopark Network, we are often using the Geo Festival as an example 
to motivate our colleagues to react in this uh, difficult uh, pandemic moment. So congratulations to all of you. It's very full Thank professional. Thank you so much. Very, very fantastic. And I would like to, to, to send a, a special, uh, uh, special hello to my friends in Indonesia. You know that I have the chance to be invited by our colleagues in Indonesia from uh, 10 years. And I, I get the opportunity to visit so many wonderful places. I'm speaking to Pak Anang, to uh, uh, Budi uh, Martino, to uh, Elina, and so many. And I am so happy from 10 years to see the evolution of the specialist in the Indonesian geopark, the evolution of the geopark. And this is a fantastic signal for the future. Go on working. Go on learning, go on with the project, and uh, I guess you are doing a very good work. Thank you very much, and Thank you. have a good your festival. Thank you very much, all the distinguished keynote speakers today, for having your precious time with us. So please give a loud applause for three of them. These wonderful presentations and very nice answers as well. So, uh, before we leave, I, want, uh, I would like to sum up what we have for today's presentation, that we actually have abundant potentials, in, especially in Indonesia as a mega diversity country, to develop geotourism, uh, including geohistory, geoscience, and so on, and to educate local people so that geotourism could be beneficial for us and for our future generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned because we're going to have another uh, wonderful session from our experts today. And see you next time and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Leah Rosida, one of our moderator, moderating the panel discussions today with Dr. Budi Lolono. Terima kasih banyak. Also, thank you very much for Dr. Hans Thalstrup and merci beaucoup for Dr. Guy Martini pour la présentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to move on to lots of great presentations as well from experts. Who are they? Make sure that you guys are going to stay tuned right there wherever you guys are coming from, watching the virtual event of Geotourism Fest and International Conference 2021. We'll take a break and we'll take you to find out more about Indonesia, Geopark Rinjani, as well as more about Lombok Island. I'm Muji, have to sign off. I'll see you later, everybody. Have a wonderful day and enjoy our video about Lombok Island, Indonesia.